Hey fam, welcome to The Flirty 15. I'm your host, Heidi B. I'm a speaker, author, and relationship expert, and today I have the juiciest topic. We are gonna be talking about uh, dating somebody who co-parents or has kids. So, I know it doesn't sound juicy, but it actually is the juiciest, and I can tell you why. I wanna share my own personal experience about it with you, and then I wanna give you some tools um, that you can use to figure out what your boundaries are around um, dating somebody who has kids, especially, this is a, good, a big caveat, I think this particularly applies to women who don't have kids or who don't want kids of their own necessarily. So, um, especially for those of us that have been, um, that date in our 30s, usually by the time that you're 30 or 40, you end up dating at least one guy who has a kid. It just is part of the experience. So it can be a shock to sit, um, to have a look at what your ideals are for dating and to, you know, and have a look at what your ideals are for your life and to, um, and to know that for yourself, having biological children of your own is not something that you want. And then to find yourself dating or really falling for somebody who has kids. It is um, jarring, it can be like, it can be unnerving, it can be uncomfortable to go, wait a minute, I know that this is not something I want for my own life, whether it's because of what it would do to my body, how much time and attention it would take, what what my kind of motherly instincts are, but I am falling for somebody who has a kid and like they're a package deal. That is just, that's like a universal truth. So don't get it twisted that like there's any way to fall for somebody that has a kid and like that kid is not gonna be part of the equation. So I love this topic so much. I nearly thought about writing a second book about it. It's always kind of on my radar. It can be a tough topic to navigate because um, I think people really don't like talking honestly about how complex it is. You know, as societally, we really love stuff that's black or white, that's yes or no, that's easy or challenging. And dating somebody who has a kid is complex, especially when you have decided for yourself that you're not interested in having biological children. So the first thing I want to talk about is my own experience. Um, one of the things that was really... Um, difficult or I don't know if it was difficult to navigate but my my husband has a daughter when we started dating she was seven years old and at the time you know he and I were not living together and so the time that and he splits custody with her mom now this is a huge I think this is actually a hugely important point which hugely that's really not what I meant to say I think this is an important point um that is my experience comes as being a involved with someone who co-parents and being a stepmom to someone, to a, a kid that has a mom. So there is a different experience here when um, the kid that is involved maybe doesn't have both parents in the picture. In my own experience, both of her parents are present in the picture, engaged parents. So right off the bat, that gives me a lot of space and latitude to go look, to give myself permission to step back a little bit and go, oh, I am definitely not this kid's mom. This kid has a mom and it's not me. That's one of the very best reminders. I tell myself that all the time. She has a mom, it's not me. And my job is not to try to be her mom. My job is to try to step into step parent. Or if you're not in a step parent relationship yet, just to step into like, trusted adult who advocates for this kid. You know, that really is kind of the first place that I that I got comfortable in my road to becoming a step parent. So the first thing I need you to know is that I am involved with a man who co-parents a kid with his ex. Everybody's present in the picture. And actually when it comes down to it, there's actually four grown as adults working on parenting this one kid because her mom has a partner who's been around for a long time as well. So that's the first thing. But one of the things I really had to get used to when my husband and I were dating early on was that, you know, when he didn't have custody of his daughter, he was very engaged with me. We were spending a lot of time together doing a lot of messaging, but that when he did have his daughter, when she was in his care, I heard from him much less. And initially I took that to mean like that he didn't, you know, he and I had talked about that and I could hear him tell me that I'm, com he was saying to me, I'm committed to being fully present with my kid when she's with me. You're gonna hear from me 
less. And I could hear the words, but I really struggled to internalize them. And so, of course, I was like, how come I can't, how come I'm not hearing from him? You know, it would take him longer to return texts. It would take, you know, we didn't talk as regularly. We would talk in the evenings after she'd gone to bed because he was really committed to being fully present to her when it was just them. So I will say, I just want to acknowledge for anyone that's out there struggling right now because you're dating somebody who has split custody and when they have their kid, you hear from them less. That is a thing. It happens. I, it's normal. And where I really came around to it was just the idea of like, he's being a good dad because he's being present with his kid. And of course, I wanna date a guy who's a good dad to his kid, you know? So that was really the first place that I got to on that. Then the next thing for us to kind of move through was the idea of like, how do I fit in this role? What does my relationship with her look like? What does my relationship with him look like? You know, I had a good idea of what our, his and my relationship looked like, but I needed to start to figure out what my relationship with her looked like. And the, the kind of first piece of willingness I had around that, for a long time I thought like, I just don't wanna be involved at all. Like I'll just, you guys do your thing, I'll do, I'll do my thing and he and I will do our thing when it's time. But as our relationship grew, it became time to integrate our families. Now I will tell you that he and I um, dated for over a year before we moved in together. Um, and that even when we did move in together, um, we first moved into like actually a little Airbnb because we were buying an apartment or buying a house. And um, in the Airbnb, Poppy, oh, his daughter came and stayed with us. Um, and then, you know, she did her, she did back and forth with us. So she was not with us full time. And to this day, we do still have split custody. So she's not, she's not with us full time around the clock always. But the more and more time that, uh, the, the more my relationship with my husband progressed, the more I realized that our, my relationship with his family, which was him and his kid also had to progress. And it did require integrating myself and becoming open to being a part of her life too. Um, so some of the first things that I started to do, like I said, I started to consider the fact that I wasn't her mom, that I didn't need to parent her, that I did get to show up for her as an adult who cared about her, who wanted to get to know her and wanted to be able to advocate for her when, when or if things ever got tough. So what that meant was I started to spend time with her. Um, and really it was convenient for me because, you know, she was at that stage, you know, she was eight or nine and she was really into a lot of the things that I'm really into. <laughs> So it was easy to like do pop culture stuff with her, listen to Taylor Swift, color, just kind of do some activities with her. And it required taking some time to get to know her and do those things. It was one of the most challenging things I will say was watching my mouth. <laughs> my language it has always been R-rated and I really have uh, always felt very comfortable having R-rated language. My husband made it clear to me that he did not have an expectation that I modify my language around his kid, but I really just felt a responsibility to her that I not just be coming out here with the F-bomb all the time. So that was a challenge navigating how do I adjust my personality accordingly, where I'm still honoring myself, where I'm still being fully me, but I am being a version of myself that is kid appropriate. Um, and that felt uncomfortable for a while, but really, you know, I will say it is progress, not perfection. And there is really nothing. I, I just want all step parents or co-parents to know, all step parents, I don't know about co-parents, but for step parents, I will say this, there really is, as long as you are showing up and you know being um, kind and loving and providing stability and space for your kiddo or your step kiddo, your bonus kiddo, there is really not, you can't go wrong, right? There's, it, it, your responsibility really doesn't extend much beyond that. So that was another piece of the, of navigation for me was like, how much do I, do I owe to responsibility wise? I will say I grappled a little bit with the idea that, um, this sounds childish, but I'll just put it out there, that um, that she was always gonna be the most important thing to him. And the longer I thought about that, the more I realized, like again, that's another aspect of him being a really good dad. Um, and she needs to be the most important thing in his life. He's parenting her. You know, he provides for her. He gives her guidance, instruction, direction. Like I, I have needs from him as well, but he is not my parent, so I do not need to be the the primary thing in his life. He and I can have a relationship that is one of equality, that is one that we're, where we're on the same footing. And it's okay, I got to a place eventually where I realized like it is important to me that she's the most important thing to him. Um, and so that was something that I feel like a lot of people don't talk about, that there can be a place when you're dating somebody who has a kid where if you're just being honest about your humanity, you're like, oh my God, I'm not the most important thing in this person's life. 
And the more I thought about that, the more I realized that's probably true for people who get partnered without kids and then have a kid as well, right? I know there are plenty of dads actually who go through the experience of being the primary person to the to the um, mother and then mom has a baby and now baby is the primary, you know, is the most important thing. So um, I wanna just verbalize that, say that out loud. Yes, I did struggle with that. Yes, it's a little embarrassing. Yes, it's kind of childish. But the reality is I talked about it with some people I loved and trusted. They reminded me that it was very human. And eventually I really moved through that and got to this acceptance of like, that's important. It's very important that she knows that she's the most important thing to him. Um, so that's where I got to on that. The next piece of the puzzle I would say would be to start to consider what your personal boundaries are around what you wanna help with, what kind of care you wanna provide, what kind of advocacy you wanna do. So for example, one of the things that I realized as a, as a stepmom, not a biological mom, is that it's not really my job to get involved with homework. So I check in with my stepdaughter regularly. Hey, have you got stuff to do? What's your calendar look like? How, you know, I, I do check in with her around her structure, but um, when she is struggling with homework, I know that that's her dad's responsibility because he's her dad, not mine. And so I also, I almost always offer that to him first. Hey, you know, she needs a little bit of help with her homework. Can you, do you have space for that? If he doesn't, he can say to me, like, I don't have time for that right now. Can you help? And I can think about whether or not I really want to help. So I think that's one of the biggest um, places, growth edges for women who are kind of stepping, t dipping their toe into this co-parenting stepmom role. Get clear with yourself about what your boundaries are, where you will be parenting. So one of another place um, that this comes up for us a lot is around food and dinner, dinner, lunch, dinner prep. So, um, you know, is that something that I'm willing to participate in for the family? Obviously, if you're a woman who does, like, I don't do any cooking. I am not a chef. <laughs> I'm like a frozen pizza is the closest I get, right? So if you are a woman who does enjoy cooking and you're cooking for your husband, the odds are you're probably also cooking for your kid um, or for his kid or for your stepkid. For me, um, since I don't do much of the cooking, it is important that, you know, I check in with my husband about like, um, do you need me to make sure, you know, you have some commitments this evening. Do you need me to make sure that she has some dinner on the table, right? Because at, she, right now she's 13 and she's getting to the age where she can like forage for herself, but it also is still nice. It's important for me to know. It's important for me to let her know that she's a priority to me as well. And that I'm making sure that she's safe and secure and stable in the home that, that she's here when she's here with us in our home. Um, so that is another thing. I would start to like really get clear on what boundaries do you have around ways in which you want to help with parenting and ways in which you do not want to help with parenting. And honestly, it's okay if you decide, look, I don't want any part of parenting that is okay, but that will come with some consequences, which means that, you know, it will be hard to integrate the three of you um, or more, I guess I'm assuming the example I'm giving is that there's like one one kid, but it will be harder to integrate the three of you into, you know, weave that life together if you are unwilling to participate at, at all in any of the parenting or time together, right? So um, the other thing I will say is that we do get to change our minds. So even if you come to this with the idea of like, I don't want any kids, I'm not interested in any parenting, but I am in love with you, and you start to navigate that, you can always check back in with yourself. Okay, how am I feeling? Do I wanna to get to know this kid better? Do I wanna be able to, do I wanna to offer to carpool? Like that was one of the first things I did. It was very easy. I love being in the car. I love listening to music in the car. It was easy to spend time with a kid in a car because there's, you know, we don't have to like make conversation or anything. So one of the first things I offered to do was to do school pick up and drop off because it was a really easy way for me to contribute to our family, an easy way for me to show up to my for my stepdaughter and an easy way to, um, start to get to know her better just through the you know five minute drive in the car right so we always get to change our minds you can always adjust and reassess how you're feeling about the parenting that you're doing or willing to do how you're feeling about the interaction that you're willing to have um and then the final thing i think oh my god i completely lost my train of thought on the last thing i was thinking about this um but I guess where I will kind of wrap it up is just to say that, you know, if you are showing up and being consistent, being kind, being open minded, you really can't go wrong. Right. And that is the most important thing that I try to remember with my stepdaughter, which is that, you know, my only job is to show her. She has a woman in her life, a, a grown ass woman who shows her what it's like to be a mom. She has a grown ass man in her life who shows her what it's like to be a dad. My only job is to be just a, a grown woman in her life who shows her what it's like to walk through the 
walk through this world, um, you know, with whatever challenges I face. Um, and I think that that really, my ability to be honest and open with her about those experiences in an appropriate way really helps, I, I think really sets her up to have the tools that she'll need to navigate that stuff. You guys, I love that that was the topic for the Flirty 15 today. Please DM me if you have any other questions about what it's like to co-parent, step-parent, I love talking about that stuff. I will not be on at 10 a.m. tomorrow. I have some scheduling stuff that I just could not move, but I will be on for the Flirty 15 tomorrow, just later in the day. Um, in the meantime, please DM me any questions that you have. Love dating relationships. I want to answer them all for you. Uh, and you can always catch me here on Instagram, or you can have, head over to my website, HeidiBCoaching.com. Oh my God, sending so much love and light to all of you. Hope you are having a day, and we will talk soon.